Thank you, Praveen, for reading that passage of scripture. In case some of you don't know, I'm the guy that stands at the front door and say, good morning. But what a privilege it is to be a part of the Grace Chapel family and people who love one another and they love people who come through those doors. And that in and of itself is a blessing. I want to start out uh, to, to today just talking about a ministry fair that's coming up October the 15th here. We're going to do it again. Some of you already have been to those ministry fairs before. You know what they're all about. This year, we're going to take a different twist towards it. Instead of us trying to pressure you into volunteering for something, we're not going to say, we're not going to ask you to volunteer at all. But we, what we are going to ask you to do is go by the tables and check and see what the different ministries are doing. We'll have some 30 tables on the outside. Now, what I need you to do right now is to, uh, to uh, help me out. I need you to be praying to God for good weather. Because we like to do this outside. Uh, and just so if you start praying, I believe what James says, the prayers of the righteous, what? Availeth much. And so I'm, I need you to, to be praying for that, that we can have a real good time. We have all of our community partners committed to coming and setting up tables out there. They will also be out there as well. And here's the good thing, even better thing, I'll say, we're feeding you lunch. And so you get a chance to have lunch together. You won't have to worry about going anywhere. So make your plans to be here and to be a part of that as well. Well, for the last couple of weeks, um, uh, I've had the privilege of, of joining up with Ben and preaching through Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6. And so by the time we finish this, which is next week, you're going to know Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6 by heart, right? So if you know, if you, if you can say it with me, listen, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Oh, wow. That is great. So today I am going to be looking at the topic, um, acknowledging him in all your ways. I've already gone through this scripture, so we don't have to do that. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the word acknowledge. He says, acknowledge him in all your ways. So acknowledge means to conduct oneself in such a way that it demonstrates that you know God. You know, so the word acknowledge means to know some. If I'm acknowledging, I know you. So our lives should reflect the fact that we know God and how we conduct ourselves in this world expresses the fact that, hey, there's somebody who knows God. There's somebody who, who, who ha has a relationship with God. So acknowledgement, uh, God starts first of all with us trusting him and not trusting our, our own wisdom and our own self. So I want to share with you three small areas but big areas in which we can acknowledge him in all of our ways. The first one, acknowledging him means to, to give honor to God. That is our praise. That is when we, we lift him up, when we honor him, we, we, we offer him praise. It says simply that to, to praise God is what we offer uh, in acknowledgement of God's excellence. The last sermon that I talked to you about the fact that he is um, omnipresent. He's omniscient. You know, he's omnipotent. He is a great God. He is a God of all gods. He is great. And so we want to simply praise him. Listen to what David says. David says, praise the Lord. Praise, uh, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. You see, David knew how to praise God. Isaiah also knew how to praise God. Isaiah says, oh, Lord, you are my God, and I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans form of old, uh, 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 plans form of old, faithful and sure. He knew God because he had walked with God. You remember in, in Isaiah chapter 6, he walks in. And he sees God as high and lifted up. He sees him all in all of his holiness and all of his purity. And he says, away from me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. 
but we're told that he was cleansed with that piece of coal, burning coal, and made holy before the Lord. God has made us holy before his throne that we can offer these kinds of praises because we are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. We are covered in that blood. You know, Moses also was a man of praise. He simply says, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. And so Moses knew of God from a young child because his daddy instilled that within him, and he, was a, he learned to be a man of praise. Again, we want to look at what David says. He says, my mouth is filled with praise and, and with all your glory all day. I love that last part. It's just not something I come to church on Sunday and do, but it's something I'm committed to my entire life all day, all night, every. I want my life to be a praise to God, in honoring of God, talking and speaking of his excellencies that he has shown us. We need to realize that praise is just not a buzzword, but it's about the condition of heart for us as disciples. It is a condition, it is a heart that has surrendered oneself to God, saying, God, I am yours. I have been washed in your blood. I have been saved from my sins, so I surrender my life. When we said those words, I want to make Jesus Christ Lord and Master of my life. We're saying, God, I, don't, I do no longer want to be uh, surrendered to the devil. I want to be surrendered to you. It is, a heart, it is a heart that is dependent on God, that has learned that our strength and our, 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 our reason for living comes as a result of God. It is, it is a life that is focused on doing his will. I love what Jesus said. Faced with, the, with, with death before him, praying in the garden, he said, not my will, Father, but thine be done. And so here we are as his disciples. We come before him and we say, God, it's not about what I want to do. It's about what you want us to do. You may have heard me say, some of you, that when you open your eyes in the morning, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, this is what you need to know. God has a work that he's prepared in advance for you to do. Nobody else but you to do. So live this day to do that work that he has called you to do and submit to his will. It's a, it's a life that is designed to seek him and to please him in every way. That should be the desires of our heart when we are giving praise. Also, the Hebrew writer says this. The Hebrew writer says, through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. You like to sing? Now, I've heard people say to me, oh, Jim, you don't want me to sing. God wants you to sing to him. You go through your day and sing. You know, you can, you can, I sing in my mind. I sing with my mind. But we sing praises to him. We say, all right, this is my God. I love him. I appreciate him. God, I praise you for being such a, a loving, a kind, a merciful, a good God. Oh, I praise you. So right now I want you to think of something you can praise God for. Go ahead. Think of something you can praise God for. All right, we don't have time for all of that. Because I know you, you got a lot, right? Just like I do. But that's what we, it means to to acknowledge God. I know him, and therefore I praise him. I honor him. I give him all the glory for all that I am and all that I will be. I give him the glory for the fact that I will be with him in eternity. I give him honor for that. Second point, acknowledging God means we live like we know him. That's our profession. We live like we know him. 
when you walk out those doors in the morning, when you get up, when you go to bed, when you're at home with your family, with your wife, with your children, with your grandchildren, in the case of mine, and some of you with your great-grandchildren, does it say, I know God? Is your life reflecting that? I want you to think about this. Remember who you are and what you are and who you represent when you walk out that door. When you walk in this world, you need to understand and to reflect God's glory, the fact that you know him. That's the way we acknowledge him in all of our ways. A guy by the name of John Westercroft tells of a fable about a baby lion that became lost and had wandered into a family of lambs. And the lion soon started acting like he was a sheep, bleeding, burying his face in the grass, and running from danger. So one day, when the lion was munching grass alongside the other little lambs, he heard this loud roar. And all the rest of the little lambs just took off running from him. But the little lion stayed there. And when the one who had made that loud roar came about and he looked at that little lion munching grass, he says, what are you doing here? Why, I'm munching grass, said the little lion. But the big lion said, what's that pathetic noise that you're making? He said, that's called a bah. The big lion took that little lion over to a quiet pool of water, and he said, look at our faces. Wow, you look just like me, said the little lion. He said, yes, you are, he said, the big lion, and now you know who you are and whose you are. Start living like a lion. It's important for us as God's children to know who we are and whose we are and what we represent when we're out there in the world. Now, I want you to think about this. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you might declare the praise of him who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. That's who you are. When you go out each day, when you walk into society, when you go into that office tomorrow, when you go to the grocery store, when you see someone on the street needing help, remember who you are and who you represent. Amen? All right, church. Act like you know him. He says this, Peter says this, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in some of the things that you do. Right? That, is that what it says? Okay, I'll read it again. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in most of the things you do. Right? Why y'all looking at me like that? No, it says be holy in all the things that you do. If I get on the internet, I'm going to be holy because he is holy. You see? If I'm talking to you and I'm talking to you about somebody, I'm going to make sure I'm being holy as he is holy. I'm going to be gracious and kind. I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. These are the things that are going to dominate my life. Why? Because I know him. Because I walk with him. Jesus says this, 
your light must shine before people in such a way that they see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Are the places you go, do they glorify God? Are the things you do, do they glorify God? The way you treat other people, does it glorify God? You're going to make disciples who will make disciples. Is, are you doing that to the glory of God? Do you know him? And do you know what his needs, his desires are? A disciple. Do you know what a disciple's main goal is? Here it is. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. It says this, whoever speaks as one who speaks of oracles of God, or whoever serves as one who serves with the strength God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. First Peter 4 and verse number 11. That's important. That we walk, not just talk, but that our lives reflect that we have a knowledge of who God is. Then acknowledging God means we're walking in prayer. So here's a passage of scripture that we have seen. It says what? Pray without ceasing. What does that mean? That means that, I, you know, I got to put my head down and keep on praying. Now, head down is just something we do. We, it's part of what we kind of learned when we were little kids, you know. You know, when you were little kids, your mom used to say, now bow your head. Your daddy said, now bow your head and put your hands together, you know. I remember, I remember when I was growing up, we learned this one. Everybody learned something different because my grandkids learned something different from us. But we God is good and God is great. Lord, we thank thee for this. You remember that? We sing a little song, you know. It was so cute. It was so nice. So my grandkids now, okay, so let's, let's jettison 60, 69 years ahead. So this is what my grandkids do. Tick tock, tick tock. Y'all have heard that one? Listen while we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for a brand new day. Hooray! <laughs> All right. All right, it's prayer. But he says here, he says, listen, have a attitude, have a mind, have a direction towards prayer. That's simply saying to us as disciples, stay connected all day. When situations come up, you just go straight and talk to God. Now, we, we have learned that this is how you pray. Most gracious and mighty God, I come before your throne with bowed heads and humble hearts, thanking you for the many blessings of life that you have given to us from our early existence to this present day. I was saying, that, that, he's not asking us to go through all of those. You know, a lot of times we were saying that, we were impressing somebody. He's simply saying this. He's simply saying, listen, when you pray, stay in communication, Father. I see that person over there, and I know you want me to speak to them. Lead me and guide me through this. Oh, Father, somebody just cut me off in traffic. I'm real tempted right now. I, I, I need some strength. I, I need you to help me work through this, to remember that I know you. <laughs> Because I sure want to get them back. <laughs> so we're talking constantly before God. We're bringing things before him. Why? Because we're praying without ceasing and we pray like we know him. You talk to those people you know. And since you know God, then you're staying in constant communication with him. Paul tells the, the Colossian Christians, he says, devote yourself. Give yourself fully, he simply said. Devote yourself to prayer. That's not something we put on the bike burner. But that's something that has a very high priority in our life as we are living as disciples of his. Prayer. And says to be watchful. 
keep your eyes out because the enemy or devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And as someone is you, he'll bring temptations your way. But you got to remember this. Greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. So God will give you the strength to overcome anything. But we need to talk to him. We need to stay connected. We don't need to be weak disciples. We need to be strong disciples. And we're strong in the Lord. Amen? Pray like you breathe. Okay? Pray like you breathe. Prayer demonstrates our dependence on God. Listen, how, I want you to do something for just, just, just a few minutes. Okay? Hold your breath. You still going? I know some of y'all don't let go, right? But it's like, if I don't, I'll die. If you don't pray, you're going to die. You're going to die. You won't grow as God wants you to grow. You won't be connected to him. You won't know him. Therefore, you can't reflect his glory. So it's important for us to stay connected and to stay with him. God will lead you where he wants you to be. But you have to talk to him daily to see where he wants you to go. That's the key to prayer. Lead me and guide me. In a few moments, we're going to sing a song. And we, we know this song. Some of you are going to connect right with me, right? What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Should we should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who with all our sorrows bear? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Cumbered with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do our friends and, and foes despise and forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he'll take and shield you, and you will find a solace there. Ask for his protection. Ask for his guidance. Ask for his strength. Ask for his wisdom. And he'll give it to you if you pray. If you pray to him. So. We acknowledge God in all our ways. Through our praise. Through our profession. And through our prayers. Will you acknowledge him as Lord? So as we end this service. There might be some out there today who haven't even made the decision to trust Jesus Christ as your personal savior. As Praveen was talking about, he did when he was a young fellow. And you're wondering, what is it that I need to do? Well, I'm glad you ask. You need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. You need to be willing to repent of all your sins, to turn away from the life of wickedness and turn towards a life with God. You need to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, saying, I want to do your will. I want to follow your way. I want to have eternity, my, my eternal life with you. And then you bear it with him in baptism. Folks, let me tell you what happens. You go to, down into waters of baptism, and when you go down into those waters, oh, and the water looked good this morning, too. Oh, man. This is the day to do it, okay, if you haven't done it. But listen, you go down into the waters of baptism. As you go down into the waters of baptism, it covers. 
when that when you go down into those waters, all your past sins are gone from heaven. You can say, you remember when I did so? He said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ just cleansed that away. And you come up a new creature, a new, you come up a, 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 a child of God in Christ for eternity. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit just like those on the day of, the, of, of Pentecost did. That's a decision that only you can make. That's a decision that God is calling you to. Saints, I encourage you to live like you know him. Amen? If you have a need, come up. We, we want to pray for you. We want to encourage you. While together we stand and sing our invitation song.